Good day everyone, my name is teacher Ulysses and today we will be learning about the subjunctive mood. So to start with, let's have this question, what is a mood? So mood is the form a verb takes to indicate the attitude of a person using the verb. And uh, in English grammar, how many moods are there? There are actually three moods in English grammar, which are the indicative mood, the imperative mood, and the subjunctive mood. So our focus for today is about subjunctive mood. But let's just go through some of the moods in the English grammar. So the indicative mood states facts or asks questions. For example, Jack is happy, or you could also say, is Jack happy? And for the imperative mood, it is an expression of a command or a request. For example, please sit down, or you can also use it with uh, disgust, such as leave me alone, okay? And the third one, which is our topic for today, the subjunctive mood, which shows a hypothetical situation, a wish, a demand, or a suggestion. For example, I demand he apologize. That's a demand. And for a wish, let's say if I were you, I would say yes. Okay, now let's continue. So, for uh, more examples, we have the following. For a hypothetical situation, you can also say, if I were you, I would leave. So, that is saying uh, a hypothetical situation because I am not you. Okay, if it were summer, I would go swimming, supposing it is not summer. And an expression of a wish, a demand, or a suggestion, we have the following examples. I wish it were mine. Okay. Next, the teacher demands that he be in the room. Next, did you suggest she bring her parents? Okay. Uh, now, have you observed what happened to the verbs in these sentences? So, in the first two sentences, if I were you, I would leave. I were you, I use were. Okay, for the subject, I. And then, if it were summer, I would go swimming. So, I use were for the subject, it. Okay? And for the next sentences, I wish it were mine. It were mine. The teacher demands that he be in the room. So, we use be. Normally, we say he is in the room. But here, we use be. And then, did you suggest she bring her parents? So normally you would say, she brings her parents. But since it is in subjunctive mood, she bring, without an S, her parents. Okay, so I hope you have got something from there. We will go into details as we go along. Okay, moving on. So here are some of the verbs that are affected by this subjunctive mood. So is, am, and are usually becomes be in subjunctive mood. For example, I am allowed. That's what we normally say, right? But for the subjunctive mood, let's say it's a demand. So I demand that I be allowed, okay? And has becomes have. So normally we use has to refer, uh, we use has after a singular, okay? So like example, he has an opportunity. But for a subjunctive mood, let's say it's a demand. So I demand he have an opportunity. Okay. Next, was becomes uh, were. So normally we would say I was free, but if it's a wish, you should say I wish I were free. Okay. And other verbs such as works and tries. So let's say normally you would say she works for me, but for a subjunctive mood, you would say I propose she work for me instead of saying she works for me. So I hope you have got something more from that. Moving on. So these are the verbs that often attract subjunctive mood. Uh, to say to ask, to command, to demand, to insist, to order, to recommend, to suggest, or to wish. Uh, first example, all I ask is that he be present. Okay, he be present. To command, he commands the prisoner be released. Prisoner is only one, but use be released. To demand. So, Jack demanded she publish the document. She, followed by publish, instead of publishes. And he insisted that the plane fly higher. The plane is only one, but use the word fly instead of flies, because it is subjunctive. Next, 
Jack ordered she be reprimanded. Okay, so instead of saying she is reprimanded, uh, she be reprimanded. Next, I recommend that Jack apologize. So normally you would say Jack apologizes. But instead, since it is in subjunctive mood, you use the verb apologize for Jack. Next, they suggest she buy a new car. Normally you would say she buys a new car because she's only one. But in subjunctive mood, she buy a new car. Next, I wish it were true. Okay, it followed by were because it is in subjunctive mood. Okay. Next, here are the adjectives that often attract the subjunctive mood. Uh, the necessary and important. Actually, the rest of those words, the imperative, essential, and crucial, are just other forms of the word necessary and important. So, example, it is necessary that he be present. So, he be present. It is important that she understand. So, she understand instead of understands. Okay. It is imperative the engine be replaced. So the engine be replaced. But actually, in some variations of English, uh, some native English speaker would use the word should. Like, it is imperative the engine should be replaced. And I think these are acceptable uh, speeches. And also, as you can see, the other Examples have that, but this example doesn't have that. We should also be aware that uh, in informal English, especially when you are talking, <clears throat> we sometimes drop the word that because it would still mean the same. It, uh, it's just like uh, it's a common thing among, among uh, people who speak English in their everyday life. So here, uh, it is imperative the engine be replaced. You can also say it is imperative that the engine be replaced, okay? Next, uh, it is essential that efficiency be increased. Okay, be increased, efficiency. Next, crucial. It is crucial that he improve instead of saying he improves. I hope you get something from that. Now, uh, going into the details of uh, the subjunctive moods, which are the present and the past subjunctive. So let's start with the present subjunctive. Uh, what is a present subjunctive? In formal English, expressions and verbs that suggest that something is recommended or important take the, take the present subjunctive form. So the present subjunctive has the same form as the base form, or what is the verb originally, of the verb. And it is the same in both the present situation and the past situation. Let's have some examples. Okay. First one. It is necessary that they be warned of the risks. Okay. So this is in the present tense. And we use be. Uh, another example. This one is in the past tense. It was vital that they be warned of the risk. Still we use be. Okay. And another example. I recommend that he see a specialist. So that is in the present tense or in the present situation. And the second one is, I recommended that he see a specialist. So that is in the past situation, but still we use see, okay? And uh, as you see, even though it is singular, he, we still use the word see instead of see, using the word sees because it is in subjunctive form. Okay, and uh, now what is a past subjunctive? So please uh, mind the difference between the two. In the past subjunctive, it is used in unreal or improbable present or future situations. So the past subjunctive has the same form as the past simple tense, except in the case of the verb be, because in the past subjunctive form, uh, be will be replaced by were. Okay, this is true for all persons, whether it's first person, second person, or third person. So let's have some examples. Uh, it's time the prime minister took the matter in hand. Okay, by the way, it's time is uh, an expression saying about the urgency of this matter. Okay, or normally you would say it's high time. Okay, or you can just say it's time. It's time the prime minister took the matter 
in hand. So as you see, prime minister is only one, but we use the verb uh, took instead of takes. Okay, next, I wish it weren't so great today, supposing it is so great today. So I wish it weren't so great today. Next, if only I had a faster computer, supposing I don't have a faster computer. So instead of saying I have a faster computer, I use I had a faster computer because if only something that I don't have. Next, I'd rather you didn't tell everyone my problem, supposing you have told everyone my problem already, okay? So I'd rather you didn't tell everyone my problem. Next, she sounds as though she were the last woman on earth, which is something that is very impossible. Next, uh, I think we're done with that. Now we proceed to the summary. Okay, so in summary, Present subjunctive use simple forms of the verbs. Example, it is important that they be allowed inside the hall. So I use be as the simple form of the verb. Next, for the past subjunctive, it use the simple past forms of the verbs. For example, if I only had a brain. I'm sorry about the example. I'm sorry for the example. It's just something to make fun of. Okay, if I only had a brain. Okay, instead of saying, if I only have a brain, so I've, if I only had a brain, supposing I don't have a brain, I'm sorry, okay. And these are the exep exception, so for the verb uh, were, okay, because it is used for both the present and the past tense subjunctive. Examples are, I wish they were coming home today, and we ask if we were allowed to skip school. Okay, now let's have review exercises. So please interact with me by answering the exercises we have here. So the present subjunctive. So here what we're going to do is to rewrite the original sentences using the subjunctive form and connect the two clauses with that, the word that. Okay, example, uh, exercise number one. It is important for him to figure this out. So you're supposed to say in subjunctive form or subjunctive mood, uh, it is important that he figure this out. Very good. Next, I insisted on Jane joining our team. So in subjunctive mood, it should be, I insisted that Jane join our team. Next, number three, we demanded an apology from him. So in subjunctive mood, we demanded that he apologize. I think you did well. Very good. Now let's proceed to exercises on the past subjunctive. So here we are going to complete the sentences with the correct form of the verb. Number one, I wish she not be so busy the whole time. So what do you think should it be? Yes, that's true. I wish she weren't so busy the whole time. Very good. Next, if I be in her shoes, shoes, I'd seek legal advice. So it should be, if I were in her shoes, if I were in your shoes, I'd seek legal advice. Number three, it's time we stop having these rows. <laughs> okay, so in subjunctive mood, say, it's time we stopped having these rows. So I hope you have learned a lot from that, from these exercises. Yeah, that's the end of our lesson for today. Thank you very much for your keen attention. Have a great day.